Hey everyone, Tamara Robertson here. For those of you that know me, it's likely because of Mythbusters. Uh, for those of you that don't, stick around because American Rotary is gonna be featuring me this month so I can tell you more about what I do, why I do it, and how I stay motivated. So as far as manufacturing is concerned, I am an OSHA certified chemical and biomolecular engineer. I have spent a little over a decade doing large scale facility designs, startups, and remediations. Uh, I work, have worked for everyone from government entities to medical entities to law firms. So a lot of what I do, I don't get to share online like most people, but uh, it is something that has lent a lot to what I do on like the fabrication side for Mythbusters uh, and the design side for that. I have been tinkering since I was knee high to a duck. My dad used to pick me up and put me in car chassis while we were rebuilding engines. We used to rebuild homes together uh, before flipping houses was a thing. Uh, I was learning framing, masonry, electrical, plumbing, drywall, painting, really anything and everything. I used to joke, I can build you a house and then make it a home. Um, and then from there, you know, I kind of went the normal route of being a girl in the South that's told that I shouldn't be working with tools or playing in shops and ran away from everything I loved until, you know, the world redirected me back to it uh, in college. And I found engineering, which I love. Um, I, you know, was one of very few females uh, in that environment, but that was fine. I grew up with my dad in the shop, so I fit in perfectly. Uh, but it did become something that as I progressed in my career, uh, I had even less female peers. And so in 2015, uh, when I was serving as a global market director, launching a division, um, reporting into a CEO, and realized there were no women for like five tiers of management below me, I decided to exit corporate America, enter into consulting, and dedicate my time to trying to inspire more little girls to want to go into STEM. Uh, it's a really fun journey because around that time is when the Mythbusters franchise found me. Um, and all I really wanted to do uh, when I went there was to be able to elevate this mission to normalize women in shop environments and to really just do the girls in STEM proud. Uh, and I was lucky enough to be the only female finalist. Well, not luck. I mean, it was all skill. <laughs> it was not easy. Um, but I was the only two MVP winner and the only uh, female finalist. And so it opened up the door for me to be with the franchise for the next four years and to really interface with fans on such an incredibly inspiring scale. I've gotten to be brought into so many families and see their kids building and their first time they use a hammer and the you know first failure they have. And it's been just such a, a rewarding and incredible uh, journey. I think I'm inspired as much by the young fans as they are me. Um, but one of the really big eye openers for me during that time was that a lot of the parents who had sons were really appreciative of seeing me in that shop floor environment and seeing me hold my own. You know, I'm, I'm out there welding and rebuilding and, and doing everything. I do not need help. And if I do, I'll let you know, but most likely I won't need the help. Um, they let me know that their sons seeing that helped because they, until that point, had only ever seen guys in shop floor environments on television. And so it kind of helped me redefine what my mission was and to start to really realize that if I had had the chance as a kid to be in a shop floor environment outside of my dad's and feel at home and feel accepted that I probably would have stayed on a trades path um, because I love working with my hands and part of the reason in 2015 that it wasn't that hard for me to walk away from corporate America was I was so far removed from the shop floor that all I was doing was managing products and people and divisions, which was rewarding in itself, don't get me wrong, but I missed working with tools. And so now I'm spending my time trying to teach kids that there are multiple paths that their journey can go down um, and that they can really define that because where your journey starts doesn't define where it ends, you do. And if you're willing to work hard, you can actually really move beyond what you're born into. You know, I was born to two military parents in a no stoplight town. Um, and education in STEM was nowhere on the forefront 
or in the background of where I thought I was going to be able to get in life. Um, and if I hadn't had a really good professor my sophomore year of college, I would have missed that trajectory. And so I've really seen that putting a tool in a kid's hand can, can change their entire lives, like teaching them to critically think and showcasing to them that they can combine the powers of their own hands and their own brains and just a couple of tools and they can build anything that they can think of. They can build anything that they can design. Um, and that artisanal path and that trades path is just as valuable as a STEM path. And so like right now I'm making the show in a partnership with Midnight Science Club on YouTube um, called Maker Science. And in it, I go in and I learn artisanal skills from tradespeople that I then teach the STEAM and STEM components behind. Because I can tell you right now, the aerospace industry is in desperate need of welders and they pay their welders more than they pay their engineers. Um, and there's no way that even with my, my BS in engineering and all the material science classes I took, that I know a quarter of what a guy on a shipyard welding and getting his welds x-rayed every day knows about material science. It's just that simple. And so what I love about what I mainly get to do um, is I get to use things like Fortnite, a video game, and I get to teach about grappling hooks and connect it to material science. So maybe that kid that's not paying attention in science class because he doesn't have a sense of agency or because she just doesn't see herself represented in the field, maybe that connection is the one that gets them excited about STEM. Or maybe what I do with superhero science and my Seekers of Science outreach comic where I tackle real world problems or I teach the science behind things like levitation and um, talk to them about things like asteroid defeating plasma blasters that we actually have. It's not just Captain Marvel that can plasma blast. You know, we have them and we take out asteroids all the time with them. You know, start, starting to talk to them about those kind of things gets them excited and gets them thinking about STEM and it gets them thinking about the way that they can go into a shop and make a difference. And so I guess in a long tangential way, what I do is I hope to inspire the future. I hope to inspire change, uh, but I do it under this cool umbrella of technology and fabrication and innovation. Um, and it comes in so many different ways. You know, I, I have this multimedia brand at this point where we have the, we have the STEM comic, we have all the, I do all the different shows um, from superhero science to maker science to ask Auntie where I talk about soft poop, which kids seem to really love talking about. Um, or I do the larger TV shows like Sijinx, where we use cool innovations to prank people or Mythbusters where we blow things up all the time and we critically think about the things that were shown uh, out in the world and say, well, is that real though? Could that be real? What would it take to make that real? Um, and so I think what I do is teach people to critically think. Uh, and I think I also answered why I'm inspired and what got me into this all in one. Um, and it's, it's everywhere and it's exciting. And I hope that if you don't know me, you know a little bit more now and that you go to my YouTube and check out all these shows and show them to the kids in your life. And, you know, take, take the time to take a kid out to the shop and show them what could be. Take them out and let them take something apart. Have them take something existing and completely reverse engineer it, figure out how it works, figure out how to change it, how to iterate on it, how to make it better, and then have them think about where it could go next. Because the imaginations and the creative thinking combined with being able to use tools are what's gonna make these kids solve the problems. And I'm telling you, they're not, it's not gonna be they're gonna solve the problems in 10 years, they're solving them now. We just need to like, give them that knowledge and get out of their way and watch them do it. Um, and yeah, <laughs> I think I answered the question.